Hello, my name is Fiona Kingdon. I live and work in Rothwell, Northamptonshire, and I mostly use a scroll saw to make my artwork. Now, a scroll saw is basically just a powered fret saw. I have an oscillating blade there that makes lots of intricate holes. So, fundamentally, I make images by cutting little holes in pieces of wood. Uh, sometimes it's in the positive and sometimes it's in the negative. So, for example, this piece here with the fox, I've cut little tiny pieces away to create the image. That one's layered. There's a layer of oak and a layer of London plain. And in this example, I've done what I really like to do, I love to do if I can find it, is found uh, an image that's come out of the grain of the timber itself. So this is a piece of yew and I've basically superimposed my little silhouettes onto a landscape that was already hiding in within the timber. Um, more recently, I've tried adding resin to my work because everyone used to complain everything was a bit brown. <laughs> so this one was cut from oak and then filled with a little bit of a resin to kind of create a stained glass type effect, which I'm quite pleased with. So that's what I'm going to do with this new piece. Um, I was going to put some clouds in amongst here, but I think perhaps there's already enough going on. So I'll leave the resin to do the work of the sky. So, to the scroll saw to finish this one off. There we go. Now to give it a bit of a clean up and get it ready to pour some resin into. Well, resin doesn't like cold and the dust, so I've come indoors to do my resin pour and I've clamped down my piece of work quite tightly onto basically a silicon baking mat with a bit of beeswax on it to provide a release agent. And I'm concentrating on one little corner at a time because inevitably after I've cut it, the wood is never perfectly flat and I don't want any leaks. So I've got my resin and hardness it's now warming up in a little basin of hot water scales and bits and pieces the cat's locked out so here goes so I'm a bit further on uh, I filled a few of these holes with resin my little carefully planned gradations of color haven't quite worked as I'd liked but I still think it's quite pleasing uh, a few more to go Okay, well I've got two sections left that I want to pour, a blue one and a green one. So I'm going to go with the blue first and then if I've got any resin left from that I'll use it to make up the green to go in around this cow here. The resin I'm using is <laughs> one to two mix. Uh, so I've got eight grams on there already. I need to add four grams of hardener. My slightly iffy scale. There we go. Now we've both mixtures have been kept slightly warm because it flows a bit better and the wood's a bit of an awkward thing to pour resin into anyway because it's porous so you never quite know how much it's going to take and how much air is in the wood that's going to bubble up after the event but uh, I don't mind a few bubbles to be honest so this has to be fairly well mixed and I'm looking for a blue that's somewhere between those two I've got a pale grey blue and a very strong almost cobalt blue in there so something in between is what I'm aiming at. Now I've got a selection of blue pigments all of which seem to give me a very similar blue so this time I'm going to try and dip in with a little bit of turquoise which gives us a quite nice watery colour. There's a bit of Prussian blue line on here we'll have a bit of that guarantee it'll probably all come out looking the same bit. Well, it's the morning after I poured the last bit into this. Let's um, have a look and see what we've got. Well, we can work with that. A few finishing touches. 
Well, I brought it outside into some natural light. I'm quite pleased with that. 